Kelly, I'm Jimmy. I am the host of the show. Thank you for watching. And I think I speak for all of us when I say we appreciate it. We are coming to you from Los Angeles, where uh, once again, our air has been named the most polluted air in the United States, according to the American Lung Association. That's right. It's, and that study was done before 420. So um, in LA, when your yoga instructor tells you to breathe in deep, she's actually trying to kill you. It's a crime. <laughs> Unfortunately, all the benefits of us not driving during the pandemic were wiped out by the wildfires caused by climate change, which was caused by all the driving we did before the pandemic. It's what you call a catch 2022. It's, <laughs> it was pretty crazy to see how clear it was when we were all in lockdown and nobody was driving. I found out we have mountains, which I didn't know. Did you know that, Guillermo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you know what they say. It's not the air quality that counts, it's the air quantity. Did you celebrate 420 last night? Of course, you mean, it yes. It seems like you maybe you're... <laughs> Yes. Still celebrating it. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yes. A little bit, by yourself? <laughs> yeah. Because I tell you something, we were shooting something last night and something didn't work out. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll have Guillermo do this. And they're like, oh, forget about it. He's, it's 420 and oh, yeah. he's not coming back to work. I was at home celebrating, okay. yeah. All right. <laughs> we have a very entertaining show planned for tonight. Not as entertaining as what went on at Guillermo's house last night, but. <laughs> We have music from Maroon 5 with an assist from Megan Thee Stallion. And back with us for the first time in four years, former President George Walker, Texas Ranger Bush will be with us promoting a new book of portraits. He's a painter. George Bush is a painter now. Could you imagine Donald Trump painting? He'd be like, painting? What am I, Mexican? Get me a taco salad and a Diet Coke. But President Bush paints and he will be with us very soon. Speaking of high profile guests, I have a big announcement to make. One week from tonight, you're probably gonna wanna put this in your calendar. In fact, hey Siri, set reminder. Next Wednesday night, we will be visited in studio by the My Pillow man himself, Mike Lindell. I know. All our dreams are coming true. <laughs> Mike just. Mike Lindell launched a new social media website for people who are too crazy for Twitter with a 48 hour live stream. He called it the Frankathon. And this was the Frankathon scene last night when they got word of our official invite to appear on the show. He promised me last night, he invited me on his show. Jimmy, if you're out there, we did try and get a hold of your publicist. Did we get a hold of him? Did they respond? What did they say? They got an email, they want you to come on. Oh, wow. They got an email, Jimmy has invited me on. Oh, are you really just now? This is breaking news here on Frank. I wow, I'm uh, I'm open to it, and I did promise them all they're going to get my pillows in the audience. That's good. That's good. All, our whole staff will get. That's good. It'll, it'll um it'll give you something to scream into. That'll be good. The bad news is that's your Christmas bonus. Santa's coming early this year, and his name is Mike now. I do have to say, his enthusiasm is infectious. We've been doing this show for a lot of years now. I don't think anyone has ever been more excited to be a guest. I want to thank Jimmy Kimball for having me on. I will take all the hard questions that night. I'll talk about, it. you know, I'll, I mean, this is, this is a blessing. I look at it as a blessing because I think everyone, everyone should be concerned here and uh, um, everybody in the country. I mean, I don't think that. I know they should be. And... Uh, so wow, this I, I'm, I'm excited. So well, back to you, back to your show. But uh, but it, but I, that is, I'm I'm really happy right now. <laughs> hey, listen, that makes two of us, Mike. We are Bed Bath and Beyond excited to have you. I will say this for a guy who's convinced that this town is filled with celebrity baby cannibals, seems to have no reservations about coming out whatsoever. <laughs> He's already on the road. He's driving from Minnesota with a California King mattress strapped to the roof of his Buick <laughs> and a trunk full of pillows for us. That Frankathon was a wonder to behold from beginning to end. At one point, Liddell called out a writer from a website called PolitiZoom, or at least he attempted to call her out. He was very mad about what she wrote about him, which made it very difficult for him to pronounce her name. This one is from 
It's Urilla Fa. Or your, spell that. U R S U. Ursula. Ursula Fa. Ursula Fa. Ursula is U R S U L A Fa. What's her name? Ursula Fa. At Ursula Fa. All day, Ursula. U R Z U L A Fa. U R S. U R S. U R S. U L A Fa. F A W. Ursula. This will put you out of business, you Zilla. It's, it's, it's Ursula. I finally figured out oh, how you Ursula. say it. Ursula. Ursula. No, that's another lie, you Zilla. Ursula. Ursula. U F A Y U. F A W. Ursula. F A W. Ursula Fa. Ursula. Ursula Fa. You are the you are the one, the enemy of the American people. Ursula Fa. Ursula Fa. Pick a better day, Zulilla. Ursula. Ursula. Why don't you talk about all my employees, you Zilla Fa? <laughs> you don't even know me, Zulila Fa. My mother-in-law's name is Ursula. What is she? I couldn't pronounce it. Oh. Yeah. By the way, I watched like 22 hours of this. I still have no idea who the guy sitting next to him is. No idea. <laughs> Ursula. Florida Congressman Matt Gates is um, in heavy spin mode right now. He spent around $116,000 on mailers the day after the New York Times reported that the Justice Department was investigating him for sex trafficking and other crimes. He also paid almost $160,000 for fundraising consulting, six figures on a commercial disputing the allegations, and he paid $5,000 to Trump's pal Roger Stone for strategic consulting. Wow, imagine how much he would have paid if he was guilty. I mean, really. <laughs> I guess he figured, my career is sinking like a stone. I might as well hire one. Roger Stone, who we saw in the Ursula clip with Mike Lindell looking on confused, is the notorious Washington dirty trickster. It's funny how these guys rail against the swamp, and then the minute they get in trouble, they head right for the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> Yesterday, a jury in Minneapolis delivered three guilty verdicts against former police officer Derek Chauvin. Many Americans on Twitter and on various platforms have spoken passionately, powerfully about the verdicts and their significance yesterday, but none spoke less eloquently than Tucker Carlson of Fox News. Tucker had a former New York City prison official on his show, and when the officer dared to use the word savagery to describe what Derek Chauvin did, Tucker had a little explosion in his head. Now, like I said, Mr. Floyd was brought under control. What, what should have happened at that point is uh, EMS should have been summoned and he should have been placed in an ambulance and a supervisor should have been yeah. called to the scene. I, I just think that it was excessive yeah, and well, it shouldn't happen. And what I'd like the, to do, the guy more, who did it looks like he's going to spend thing, the rest of his life in prison. So I'm kind of more worried about the rest of the country, which, thanks to police inaction, in case you haven't noticed, is like boarded up. <laughs> so that's more my concern. Well, but I appreciate well, you coming well, on. Ed Gavin, well, thank you. Well, nope, well, done. What the oh, hell was that? It's like there's a little girl trapped in his head, right? <laughs> he, he laughs like the villain in the movie who realizes James Bond just put the bomb back on him and he's about to explode. Let's hear that again. In case you haven't noticed, it's like boarded up. <laughs> so. That's more of my concern, but, but I appreciate but, but, you coming but, but, on. Ed Gavin, but, thank you. That's the same noise women make when he takes off his pants. <laughs> <laughs> what human makes a sound like that? You know, that's the thing. Mike Lindell, he's bananas all the time. He's consistent. Tucker Carlson just lets little bursts of it slip out, like the Joker or something. Meanwhile, the Penguin, Chris Christie, uh, may be throwing his top hat in the ring. Chris Christie who, as you probably know, is the former governor of New Jersey, is said to be seriously considering a run for president in 2024. Well, not a run so much as a sweaty walk for president <laughs> in 2024. I guess he has nothing to do. I don't know why he would think. Chris Christie, he, he was like the um, Theon Greyjoy of the 2016 campaign. You watch Game of Thrones? Came in a proud warrior, and then Trump captured him and cut his junk off and brainwashed him, made him crawl around on the floor of the Oval Office. <laughs> feed him fried chicken bones to gnaw on every once in a while, and now he wants to be president. Well, you know what they say, when God closes a bridge, he opens a window. And besides Hawaii, uh, California right now, our state, we may have the most air pollution, but we have the lowest rate of coronavirus in the country right now for all those who say, oh, they did the same thing in Florida and Texas, and look, anyway, the, the four least vaccinated states ranked by available shots compared to those who got them 
are Mississippi, Arkansas, Georgia, and Alabama, which if you take the first letter from each of those states, what, do you, well, what a happy coincidence that is. And while the big problem a month ago was a shortage of vaccinations, now we have a shortage of people who want the vaccine. A number of states have more doses now than they know what to do with. Some are even resorting to bribery. In New York yesterday, they had an event called Joints for Jabs. On 420, they gave away free joints if you got your shot. I wonder how many people got a third shot just to get that weed. But, and there's a bar, in New Orleans, there was a bar that was offering shots for shots. You get one, you take one. In Alaska, on the Kenai Peninsula, EMS personnel are bringing the vaccine to any house or business that has more than three people. Unfortunately, only two people live on the Kenai Peninsula, but... <laughs> This must be very annoying to Canada. They have, you know, a surge of cases. They're way behind on vaccines. We're giving out free mojitos co to convince these idiots to get it. <laughs> Everybody wanted these shots, and now we have too many. They're the vaccine equivalent of fidget spinners. You know what could have used the vaccine is Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent, a man who repeatedly claimed the pandemic wasn't real, COVID wasn't real. Guess what he has? COVID. It's real. <laughs> He says he's been very sick for the past 10 days, so let's take a moment now to relive some of Ted's golden COVID moments. It's not a real pandemic, and that's not a real vaccine. I'm sorry. <laughs> COVID 1 through 18 didn't shut anything down, but whoa, COVID 19. <coughs> yeah, let me put this mask on. <laughs> 500,000 people have died from COVID 19. Bull. <laughs> and I'm going to stand six feet away from everybody. Are you that stupid? <laughs> mask? I don't own no mask. <laughs> I am from the government. This needle's good for you. <laughs> you. <laughs> I was tested positive today. I got the Chinese <laughs> Well, congratulations, Ted. No one deserves it more than you. You know, last week... The world clocked the most COVID cases for any week ever, and now animals are testing positive. Seven otters at the Georgia Aquarium have COVID, which really puts a dent in all those PSAs about washing your hands. No one washes their hands more than an otter. <laughs> it's always, right? It's always nuts to remember where we were a year ago with this. And uh, with that said, it's time to look back at what was in the news one year ago this week in tonight's edition of This Week in COVID History. This Week in COVID History. It's mid-April 2020, and nobody knows what to believe. First, there were 2.2 million who were supposed to die in the United States, and then it was a million, then it was 500,000. The models, folks, are just plain wrong. Yeah, no way 500,000 Americans will die of COVID. Especially not with President Trump's new plan. Sun, sunlight, heat. Sun, heat, heat, and sun. Heat and the light. Very powerful light. What a bright idea. But how would we use this very powerful light? Supposing you brought the light inside the body, either through the skin or in some other way. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Interesting and genius. What else? I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out. In a minute, is there a way we can do something like that? By injection inside or almost a cleaning. It'd be interesting to check that. She looks like she could use a glass of bleach right about now. The media spreads word of the president's plan. But it turns out the president was just pulling our legs. I was asking a question sarcastically to reporters like you just to see what would happen. Classic. Had me going. Even his Fox and friends were confused. It didn't seem like it was coming off as sarcastic. Either way, it's important we end this mess soon or else. If we don't get this economy going again, that man could become president of the United States. Now that is far more terrifying than any coronavirus. That's a bunch of malarkey. This has been This Week in COVID History. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't. <laughs>